Hello again friends and welcome back. My name is Oscar Montes Iga. I'm a certified wine and spirits instructor for the International Wine and Spirits Guild. And today we're at the Booze Library here at Uncourt Vintage Academia and I'm gonna bring you a classic cocktail. Something that everybody recognizes as far as the name goes. Sometimes you don't may not recognize what goes into the cocktail. So some people have experienced order this cocktail without knowing how strong or let's call it spirit forward it may be um, so it's not a fruity cocktail by any means it is a uh, part of the martinis or the martini um, family of cocktails uh, but today i bring you the manhattan a very very classic manhattan the manhattan cocktail uh, the manhattan cocktail has its roots oddly enough in new york so that's not surprising but there's definitely conflicting stories of the origin itself of the Manhattan cocktail. Obviously, it is reported to have been in, created in, in the borough of Manhattan proper, uh, or it could have been Brooklyn, it could have been um, Broadway. Um, and that is really a story that we get from about the 1860s, 1870s. It is reported that in the 1860s, um, uh, somebody was already pouring a Manhattan style cocktail in Broadway then in the 1870s somebody reported to have made it in the Manhattan Club of New York City uh, for a banquet a very famous banquet that involved a lot of um, um, political entities and emissaries and ambassadors and so to speak and they say that that's what gained uh, or made the cocktail game uh, in popularity uh, but to tell the truth I think we already have cocktails that were very much the same base even prior to that even prior to the 1860s um, you know as early as the mid 1880s uh, mid 1880s around 1884 we already have a cocktail that has a base of single malt scotch whiskey or, or blended scotch whiskey it could, could have gone either way um, for the time period but basically you have a base of scotch whiskey with a little bit of simple syrup with a little bit of bitters and uh, red vermouth and it was garnished with a lemon uh, twist so that's kind of the real background history behind the Manhattan style cocktail uh, in the 1880s, uh, mid 1880s, but it was, if you forward to the 1920s, 1930s, um, especially during Prohibition, uh, that we were not really supposed to be getting American whiskeys, they started using Canadian whiskeys, and a lot of Canadian whiskeys tend to have uh, a rye base, a rye whiskey base, or um, have a rye whiskey um, character. And so that eventually kind of evolved into what we know today as the Manhattan. Um, the Manhattan co you know, cocktail in those times didn't really specify rye whiskey, scotch whiskey, um, if anything really just said American whiskey, which at the time popular was rye whiskey anyway, but it said American whiskey, Italian vermouth, and Angostura bitters. Um, Italian vermouth tends to be red and it tends to be sweet so that's the style of vermouth you're gonna need a red vermouth uh, a sweet vermouth or an Italian vermouth you have three ways of making that distinction a sweet red Italian vermouth is what you should be asking for a retail shelf if you don't have an idea of what you're looking for today I'm using Carpano Carpano Classico it's a family they've been making uh, vermouth since 1786 so pretty classic they of course have an upper tier label called um, Antica and it's beautiful vermouth. You can definitely just sip on that vermouth on its own with a nice cube. You don't need to mix it if you don't want to. It's, it's a great vermouth as a standalone uh, digestif, digestif uh, but it of course plays well with cocktails. So besides the vermouth, uh, red Italian sweet vermouth, you're gonna need um, American rye whiskey and some aromatic bitters as well. Um, so today, Let's start by building the cocktail here on a mixing glass and 
essentially I'm gonna use two ounces of rye whiskey two ounces of rye That's to complete it, and I only need three quarters of um, three quarters of an ounce of vermouth, and I already have that pre-measured. If you want to go a little higher and do an ounce, that's fine. I mean, it really it's about you playing with the ratio of flavor profiles. Whether you want something slightly sweeter or something drier, you can do half an ounce of vermouth. Again, to your liking, to your guest's um, request. Uh, but traditionally, you're gonna use about two ounces of rye three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth. Now healthy dose of Angostura bitters. I'm not using Angostura bitters today. Angosturas are very, uh, very common bitters anywhere in the world for the most part. Today I'm using the Bitter Truth um, Jerry Thomas Own Decanter bitters, which are aromatic bitters um, in the style of Angostura, but you know, Jerry Thomas, you need to look them up. It's, you know, a cocktailian um, from back in the day, old school bartender, mixologist. He came up with um, kind of like the book for OG original recipes. So we have our mix there, it just needs to be chilled. I'm serving this straight on up. You can request your Manhattan to be served on the rock or the rocks if you wanted to. But most traditionally you serve it in a coup or a martini glass straight on up. No ice so you do want to get this as cold as you can by steering you don't really want to use some shaker to mix it um, but that is it simple enough so all I need is I'm gonna drop a nice cube there and stir So when you're stirring drinks, it's important to go on the edge, right? You are going in the edge around the drink. You're not really going in and out. You're not really mixing like you're mixing other drinks. You're going on the edge. So I'm, I'm diluting, but I'm also chilling. And I'm chilling to this sense that I want to see this glass get foggy or frosty where, where there is a definite visual change in temperature. Some people say you may want to steer this 30 times, 60 times. I say it doesn't really matter if you count, if you don't. It's all about visual context. You know, your room temperature changes with the season. Your ingredients temperature may change depending on your AC conditioning and so on. So it's all visual. And tactile so you want to touch this and make sure it gets cold enough so there you go I see my glass changing I can feel it's cold I can see the shape of the ice changing That is diluted and chilled enough. So I'm gonna dump this. Again, straighten up. And lastly, the traditional Manhattan garnish. Since we do use an Italian vermouth, 
uh, we're gonna use some Italian cherries and it calls for a flag of Luxardo or in general Maraschino cherries so get whatever brand of cherries you want uh, that are Marasca cherries known as Maraschino and there you have it folks for your pleasure the Manhattan cocktail and so I gotta say that even with the addition of a sweet vermouth this is fairly enough um, a dry cocktail. It, it is on the dry scale for a cocktail. It is an aperitif. It's also a great cocktail to pair with a meal. Said if you have some like fried quail, maybe a pork belly, um, maybe um, steak tartare. Uh, it, it's a it's a cocktail that can work with food, but it's also a great. A, aperitif cocktail that will make you salivate it will get your digestive juices flowing and going and glowing um, so it's not really a sweet drink even though it has sweet vermouth and sweet cherries um, but I think you know a lot of the character of this cocktail will come from either your choice of bitters but also the style of rye that you're using you can use a high proof single barrel barrel proof you know barrel proof rye and that would be very different if you were using a standard you know mass produced commercialized 40 proof standard rye with maybe 51 percent rye which i tend not to ever buy if i want a rye whiskey i want to taste rye and i'm looking for a high rye uh, content uh, a high rye mash bill on my whiskey so anywhere from 90 95 to 100 rye percentage in that whiskey but there's a lot of bars that sadly because of the cost production goes down that they're using rye whiskeys that are uh, a bare minimum of 51 percent rye whiskey or rye content in the mash bill to 60 to 70 percent rye and to me that's not really a rye it's not a rye proper uh, the way i would like a rye myself but i think that can change the character of the cocktail as well of course of your whiskey um i think i think rye whiskey with a high rye mash bill gives you a spicier drier and more complex cocktail and drink than if you use um, a super diluted rye that's gonna be a little more bland a little bit more mainstream a little bit more like like corn whiskey or, or bourbon just because you dilute the right properties the character don't mind me I'm going to Beautiful cherry. For your pleasure, the Manhattan cocktail. Um, please shoot me any questions you may have about rye whiskey, vermouth, bitters, cocktails, mixology. What do you want to taste next? Is there any cocktails that you have a question about? Any questions you have um, you have about spirits? Please leave a comment below. I'll um, be sure to read those. And if you haven't, please subscribe so that you get a notification for your next cocktail. So we're trying to do cocktails once a week. And there, there's a lot of fun um, content coming. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. My pleasure having you. Cheers.